You're live on YouTube. I'm live on YouTube. What's up, YouTube guys? Um, You're today, now live on Instagram too. All right, Instagram and YouTube. What's up, guys? Today I'm going to talk about this monster that is a Rachidactylus lichianus, and look at this pathetic jump. That is pathetic. <laughs> so, so this is the giant gecko, also known as the Rachidactylus lichianus, and this is the world's largest gecko in existence. Um, these guys could reach about 15 inches long, and they can reach about 500 grams, the biggest ones. And they're just a monster animal. They're very impressive. They're super easy to take care care of. Um, besides the big size and how rare they are, they are very easy to take care of. Um, and actually, they're not as hard to find as they were at some point. Um, but they definitely make great pets. This guy I don't handle too much, so he's uh, kind of like moving around a lot. He's he's nervous a little bit. But as you can see, guys, I mean check out the size of this guy he's like the size of my forearm he's like 15 uh no he's not 15 inches long i'm sorry he's about a foot long and he weighs about maybe like 350 grams or something like that and just for reference a crested gecko average crested gecko weighs around 45 50 grams if you have any questions How you can ask how many lychees do you have? At the moment, I have four. So this is Shrek. A lot of you guys already seen Shrek before. He's my biggest lychee. Um, then I also have Monster, which is my other other big lychee. He has more of like pink blotches and purple blotches. And I have two females that will hopefully breed with these guys. Because for those of you that know lychianis and lychees, they're not the easiest species to breed. They're actually pretty hard to breed. You can't just put a pair together. You actually gotta, you know, make sure they're bonded and sometimes they can really hurt each other. Someone asked how much are they and do you sell Leos? Okay, I do sell Leos, leopard, leopard geckos for you guys that don't know. And they, the Lichianis geckos, these are uh, giant geckos, they range in price. So there's different localities with these some localities are harder to find than others which means they're more expensive but generally if you want a lychee they're gonna start for a baby they're gonna start around three hundred and fifty dollars the cheapest and it's gonna go up to maybe four hundred five hundred dollars for babies um, I have seen baby lychees at eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars it just depends on what locality they are and adult lychee on this it's going to be a lot more expensive. We're looking about $1,500 to $3,000, depending on the animal. But, but they are gorgeous and very impressive looking animals, for sure. How many geckos for sale? Um, how many leopard geckos? Or is that the same person? Um, hold on. No, it's not. So how many geckos for sale? I don't know. I, have, I actually have to do an update for all the available geckos that will be on my new website which I'm finishing up there's a couple things I have to finish up and then I'm hoping by next week like Monday of next week I should be launching the new website with brand new available geckos and I'm gonna have a really big sale to you know get a lot of people to go and check it out so you guys stay tuned for that but yeah I have maybe like 50 geckos available or something like that someone asked how much does he eat how much does he eat? He eats a lot. He's a monster. So this guy, uh, geckos in general, they don't eat every single day like mammals do. Um, they have a slower metabolism, so they could, uh, they could, you know, afford to have a couple days that they don't eat. But generally, they'll eat um, every like three days, like every three days, um, three days out of the week they'll eat, and they'll eat like, uh, you know, like. Um, Someone also asked, what is a good cage size for them? Okay, so the, the cage size is going to depend on the, 
on the sides of your animal. So this is what I feed them in. This is a two ounce cup or one and a half, I don't know, like a one and a half ounce cup. And I fill it basically like halfway or a two ounce cup, feed it, uh, fill, fill it up like halfway. And I leave in the food there for like two days and that's gonna be good enough for them to, um, to, to eat in a Picasso basket. So these guys, the Lichianis geckos, they love their cork bark, okay? Now, the best thing to get them is like cork bark rounds. This is a cork bark flat, obviously, but the rounds, they will hide in there and that's where they'll spend the, red, the you know, their days. At night, they come out, they feed, and then they just kind of hang out. But if you're gonna keep Lichianis, it's a must that you have a lot of cork bark. You know, they feel very secure when they can hide in that cork bark. And um, the size of the enclosure, like somebody asked earlier, it's gonna depend on the animal. For this big guy, I have him in a 30 gallon enclosure. Uh, for like a smaller Lichianis, you could probably keep them in like in a 20 gallon enclosure, okay? So it just depends on the size of the animal. If you have two Lichianis, like if you're gonna breed your Lichianis, then you probably want like a, um, I would say like a, I don't know, the equivalent to like a 40 gallon enclosure or something around that size or like a 50. Someone asked, aren't the leeches much more aggressive? They can be, so that's a good question. Um, so generally, the, the locales, the localities that are from the secular islands, you know, not meaning, so there's New Caledonia, right? And then in New Caledonia, there's a whole bunch of little islands off to the shore, and in those shores, there's Lichianis as well. In those uh, little islands, there's Lichianis as well. The lychees from those islands are smaller, and they're not aggressive. They're not really aggressive. You can pick them up, they're not gonna bark or bite you. But the ones from the main island, the ones from the big island of New Caledonia, those guys are the lychees that get the biggest and they're the most territorial. So they're the ones that you see, you know, barking at the camera or, you know, trying to lunge at their uh, owner or, or trying to bite. But for the most part, guys, lychianis, like this guy could get grumpy sometimes, but as soon as you take him out of the enclosure, he's like, oh crap. You know, he feels insecure and he's just like, you know what, I, th I don't think I want to pick a fight against somebody this size. So, in their enclosure, they could be a little territorial, but outside of their enclosure, as you can see, he's pretty chill. Um, what's your favorite lychee color morph, and do lychee bites hurt? Oh or yeah, they hurt. You see these big jowls over here? These muscles here on this lychee, right here, these guys will definitely pack a strong bite. Now, um, what's my favorite lychee morph? I would say the high pink and the snowflake. The snowflake are basically something that has a lot more white blotches like this. It's covered in white blotches, white blotches. So it just makes it a very, very cool looking animal. This guy is more of like a normal, like uh, he's obviously very attractive, very pretty animal, but he is not like a high pink or he's not a uh, snowflake or anything like that. But what this guy is, he is a mix of a Nuana and a GT type A, I think it is. T GT type A or type B. So basically it's a, they grabbed one of the big Lichianis, one of the ones from the main island, and they bred it to one of the smaller Lichianis because the big Lichianis usually, they're the most impressive because they're massive, but they don't have as much color. So the smaller Lichianis, those are the ones that you see that have the high pinks, all the colors. So when you breed them both together, you kind of get you know the best of both worlds. And a lot of people like to keep the localities separate, but since they're the same species, I don't really mind breeding them together. And I actually prefer to get some of the size with some of the color and have like an in-between awesome looking animal. How much do they weigh? And how can you tell when one is sick? Okay, so um, the, the, the weight depends on the locality and, and you know how big it is, obviously. A Lichianis will generally take about three to four or five years to get to their adult size, you know. Um, once they are adult size, they can weigh as much as like 200 grams all the way up to like 500 grams. Um, and if, they, if any gecko pretty much that you think is getting sick, 
you're gonna you gotta look at the eyes you gotta look at how the animal is moving so the eyes will tell it all if the eyes are sunken in once they're active excuse me so if he's active like this like if I take him out of his, his enclosure and he's moving around and he's kind of sluggish he's lethargic or his eyes are sunken in then um, your animal is probably dehydrated or sick or you know probably has a parasite or something but that kind of stuff like if you're not sure what your animal has um, try to contact somebody first of all you should try to contact the person you got the gecko from and if it's really bad you should take them to a vet see if you know you can bring them back can I spray paint hides on Leo's cages and do you have or sell super giant leopard geckos okay um, so I would not spray paint anything that we're gonna keep animals in okay uh, first and do I sell super giant leopard geckos I don't have any available at the moment sometimes I do sell them um, but I do sell normal leopard geckos, like your normal moors and stuff like that. Okay. What made you get a lychee? What do you mean? Look at this thing. It's freaking awesome. Okay. How's that YouTube coming along? I don't care about Instagram. Oh my god. <laughs> YouTube has 26 people. Cool. But the connection's good? Yeah. Nice. But you're running out of battery. Alright, so we'll keep this short. But, okay, so a little bit more about these uh, Lichianis geckos, the giant geckos. Like we were saying in the, begin the beginning of the video, if somebody wants to breed these, it's not like the crested geckos where you could buy a male and three females, put them in a cage together, and in a couple months you'll have babies. No, not at all. These guys are very territorial, especially the bigger... Uh, localities like the Grand Terrors. So when you get Lichianis, you um, if you get a pair of juveniles, a lot of people, including Alan Rapashi, you know the godfather of all the New Caledonian geckos, he used to pair them up as juveniles and let them grow up together. That way they get used to each other, and if they were gonna fight, they weren't gonna make you know they weren't gonna harm each other that bad. So that is one way of doing it. If you got two you know good sized juveniles. You pair them up together, you know, just keep an eye on them, make sure they're going to be fine, and let them grow up together, and when they're ready to breed, they're going to give you eggs. Another way of doing it, which is a little bit more risky, which is what I'm going to have to do because I didn't get them as juveniles, um, is pairing up the adults. So when you do that, you have to be very careful because, like I said, you can't just throw two Lichianas in one cage and expect them to get along. You got to put them in a brand new enclosure with brand new you know furniture that way they're not gonna be smelling each other's scents and getting territorial um, you want to make sure they have some you know a large amount of space and so that they can get away from each other if they're fighting or something like that and uh, yeah you just gotta watch them very closely the first couple days lizard breeding in general is a, is a bit aggressive but you're gonna know your Lichianis are not compatible. If one is beat up like really badly, if he's like in the bottom of the enclosure and the other Lichianis is on top, then that's when you usually know, okay, my Lichianis are not getting along. If they're both sleeping together, that's a really good sign. That usually means that they've bonded. But it could, from one day to the next, Lichianis could start fighting again, like a, you know, like a married couple. So you gotta be careful that even if they are bonded, you just gotta always keep an eye on them, making sure that they're not gonna like harm each other. Um, now, Lichianis, another reason why they're so expensive, the giant geckos, is because their production is very, very low. It's not like the crested geckos that will, you know, bang out, you know, 10 clutches of eggs in a season. Lichianis will have two to maybe five, if you're lucky, clutches of eggs and not always the babies hatch so that's why that's another reason why they're a little bit more expensive and i have heard from a lot of people that sometimes the the animals will just decide to take a year off and not breed so it's definitely something that you gotta you know keep in mind nobody should be getting into this just for the money because let's face it if we were in this for the money we'd be, be we'd be doing a lot of other different things someone someone asked if you shipped to canada Yes, I can ship to Canada, but it's a little pricey, 
Um, but if you're really interested, you know, message me and we can figure it out. Um, someone asked, what are the care requirements? For what? I'm guessing for... For the Lichianis? Okay. Yeah. Alright, so let's run through the care real quick. It's really as simple as a crested gecko. Let's say you have an enclosure, right? You could keep them on mulch, you could keep them on um, moss, you could keep them on paper towels, you could keep them on brown paper. The substrate doesn't really matter as long as it's not sand or something from a desert. Okay, so substrate, you got it. Now, like I said earlier, you want to put a lot of cork bark. Plants are not really required since they are heavy animals. They're not going to be resting on a leaf or something like that. Um, you could put some like thick branches, some you know big cork pieces of cork bark where they could hide and you could give them a big water bowl um, and you're gonna be feeding you know the crested gecko diet which is the uh, rapacia or the pangea whatever you feed and you also want to make sure that these guys they don't need any heat lamps or, or UV lamps but you can provide a heat lamp a lot of times the lychees will bask you could give them a basking spot of around you know 85 degrees or 90 degrees but you got to make sure the rest of the enclosure will stay cool you want to make sure that the enclosure will be anywhere in like the 78 range 78 range on the you know on the like moderate side is perfect um, I wouldn't let it cool too low I, I think Lichianis they they like it a little bit warmer and they do grow a lot better when it's like that sweet spot of like 78 to 80 degrees that's when they're going to be eating the most and that's when they're going to be growing the most. So what I do with these guys is I basically keep them like that in the enclosure, cork bark. Uh, I give them a water bowl because they are bigger crest, bigger uh, geckos than the crested geckos. And I also give them food every like three days or so. I do not keep any lamps on them, but I, I uh, you know, my room stays pretty warm so I don't need to. And I missed like once every two days. I just give them a good missing, make sure the humidity is nice and high. How long do they live? Oh, that's a good question. Lichianis can live like 30 to 40 years. They're really long-lived geckos. These guys, um, I think the, well, I'm not even gonna say, I don't even know, but I know for a fact that there has been some that have lived up to 30 years. And you know, with the new diets and you know, care, when we're caring for them in captivity, we could monitor them and make sure that they're the healthiest they could be. So who knows, they might be able to live even longer. Um, how do you take out a Chihuahua from their enclosure? Because I heard they can be territorial too. Um, I mean, if you're scared of getting bit or you don't want to get bit, you could just like, for example, like if this guy's laying here, if he's on his cork bark, I just pick up the cork bark and take it out of the enclosure. If he's just there in his enclosure, I'll kind of just like make him get on a piece of wood or a, like a paper towel roll and then I take him out and then you could grab him. Someone asked if um, it's better to have a, a chihuahua or a lychee as just a pet. Um, it really depends on you and what you like. I think the Chihuahua are a little bit like calmer when you take them out. Like they won't like run or squirm as much. Uh, but in the beginning of the video, he was really like like squirming and trying to jump everywhere, but he calmed down a bit. Um, Chihuahuas for the most part will always be calm, from my experience at least. Uh, but it just really comes down to what you like best you want something with big size or you want an animal that's you know really cool looking and very very uh that will camouflage nice i think he's gonna poop there you go Ooh. that was that's for you guys i know he was gonna do that and yeah anywhere. he poops are no joke he put this kind of it smells bad yeah um poop does smell bad <laughs> what's a good begin a uh, beginner monitor Beginner monitor, um, I would say a Savannah monitor. I would say, uh, yeah, Savannah monitor is probably the best. Um, your phone's on 10%. Okay, we'll do like five more minutes or 10 more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay, can you show us your Chihuahuas more? I will next time. Um, 
Uh, tell you what, I promise you, next time I will do a video just like this, but on chapuas. Okay, let me clean this crap. Uh, uh. It's right here. Okay. All right. So as you can see, Nietzsche's do take very, very big dumps. I know a lot of you were wondering. Oh, another uh, really cool thing that you guys should know. What I have here, this is called Rupashi Grub Pie. I'm gonna show you. For those, uh, a lot of the Lichianes, they won't eat crickets and they don't really, they're not really bug hunters. But this is called Rapashi Grub Pie. Um, this is really, really high in protein. It's a great source of, you know, protein and fats if you want to get your Lichianes or any of your geckos to grow a little bit quicker. And sometimes geckos that don't eat insects, they will eat, they will munch on this stuff. So it's a great alternative. This stuff, um, let me show you the. the Hold this is the, the container it comes with. It comes in, I'm sorry. It's called Rapashi Grub Pie. It's a powder you mix with, um, mix with, what's it called? Water, with boiling water, and it makes this gelatin type food. You could also mix a little bit of this in the, in the Crested Gecko food to add a little bit more protein. And, uh, yeah, a lot of these geckos love it. I don't know if he'll eat it right now because he, he might be a little freaked out. Maybe he will. Oh, he is eating it. Come here. Come here. Oh, he just bit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just kind of bit it and uh, then spit it back out. Wait. See that? Guess he doesn't want any. But anyways, yeah, so not every gecko will like it, but a lot of them will. And that's a great way to get them to to get some more protein and get them to grow a little bit quicker. Any questions? Let's do five more questions and then I gotta go. Okay. Um, will my juvenile crested find his food in the left corner of a 10 gallon tank? If yes. Okay. Um, someone asked, on. Your phone. What happened? I think your phone like gets notifications. Don't want to get bit. What up? What's up with uh? Any other questions? Uh, someone asked. Can I send you a picture of my gecko so you can tell what gender it is? Sure, but let me tell you guys this. If you guys get an animal from somebody you should be asking that person all the questions I will be gladly to I will gladly help you but just keep that in mind guys if somebody sells you an animal you gotta ask that person that you know that you bought the animal from but yeah feel free to uh, send me your questions and I would be happy to answer someone asked best enclosure for crusties best enclosure for crusties in reality what I think is best is um, is like something like this. I think this is best because it holds the humidity in better. But if you don't know how to, you can't just go to Target and buy this. Like, look, if you can make that screen right there on top and you're not going to miss 50 times a day, then this is the best enclosure. But if you just want to have something that makes it look nice, then I would get like an Exoterra or a Zoom Ed. Those enclosures that open up in the front. Um, those are probably the best, the nicest looking ones at, at least, because they're a little bit taller. They're not, you know, like a 10 gallon. It's okay, but it's it's better to have it taller. Someone asked, Aki monitor in the future? Yes, I love Aki's. Aki monitors. Recently, I've just been, you know, getting really into the Cyclora, the monitors, like all the bigger species of lizard. I actually went to Thai Park's place, the Iguana Fest. Um, last weekend and I you know filmed a lot of cool stuff there actually I released a, a video on Thai Park's place la uh, this Wednesday which was like a bonus video for you guys and I will be re releasing another uh, Tiki's Geckos episode today on Bearded Dragons but anyways 
yeah, I love monitors and the the Aki monitors, the Dumerals monitors, the what's it called? Um, the Timor monitors are really cool. And man, one day I hope I can have all these things, but right now I can't. Someone asked, what do you think is a good gecko for a first timer? First time gecko, I would say the best thing is a crested gecko. Um, obviously, I'm a little biased, but I really, I personally like the crested gecko better. I like, like, and better than the leopard gecko. Leopard gecko and crested gecko are the best too, but the crested gecko, I like arboreal animals, and they're just so simple. They don't need as many insects as the leopard gecko. They don't need any heat, so it makes it that much simpler and easier to keep. So, first pet, gecko, I would go with a crested gecko for sure. Someone asked, said, um, I can't get my crusties to eat out of their food dishes. I have to hand feed them both. Help. Um, so everybody always says, says that, but I will put money on it that the gecko is eating on its own. You just don't know it because you might be serving too much food or you might be, you know, unless the gecko is sick and there's something severely wrong with it, then maybe the gecko is not going to be eating on its own. But if the gecko is healthy, it's always going to eat on its own it's gonna find its food you know you see look look around in this room I have you know over 200 animals I don't worry about any animal not eating unless they're like sick or something but if all these geckos I just put the food bowls in their in their enclosures and they will always find it and they will always eat who will starve themselves to death no one so don't worry about it as long as the enclosure is the right size you know, as long as you don't have a baby gecko like this in a, you know, 50 gallon enclosure, you're you're gonna be fine. How many crested geckos can you have in a cage? Depends on the size of the cage. 10 gallon tank, I would I only I would only keep one in here. 20 gallon enclosure, maybe two or three. 40 gallon enclosure, five. You know, it just depends on the enclosure. Any vi Any videos on the Abronia graminia coming up? Uh, yeah. Well. I, I have a video on... Oh, look, he ate it. I'll spit it out. He just dropped it. Um, yeah, I do have a video on YouTube called uh, Bronia, uh, the Dragons of the Trees. It's a really cool video that you guys can see. Oh, he dropped it. Um, so you can check that video out if you haven't already. <laughs> see what I did with um, yeah, but I will be doing I will be updating you guys more with the abronia. I actually just had a lot of little abronia lithra chillis. You good? I just had a lot of abronia lithra chillis babies um, being born so in a couple months I will be po posting those for sale and um, Yeah, guys stay tuned like I said earlier uh, Later today, we're going to release another episode of Tiki's Geckos on Bearded Dragons. And if you haven't seen already the episode we did with Thai Park's animals, you know, the, the Cuban rock iguanas, um, blue iguanas, uh, rhino iguanas, tegus, all that cool stuff, go check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, it's called Tiki's Geckos Visits Thai Park's Lizard Farm. And thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time for YouTube Live. And the last Saturday of every month, a new episode of Tiki's Geckos, which is today. So, see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.